Hi, I'm Emily from Trident Fly Fishing. Today we're going to tie a version of the Edson Tiger bucktail streamer pattern. The fly was originated by Bill Edson, who lived in Portland, Maine, and was a very passionate Atlantic salmon fisherman. He's a pretty famous fly tire, and probably best known for the Edson Tiger Light and Edson Tiger Dark. The signature component of these flies is, are the brass or gold cheeks, sometimes called eyes, that are tied on the fly in place of a jungle cock feather, actually. But they have tangible benefits as well. The, the eye or cheek acts as a weight, a very light weight on the fly, so it keeps it from skating across the surface when it's fished. It's a very effective pattern. Um, I've tied it in all sorts of sizes and different variations in the materials. Um, and today we'll do a version that I've found to be very effective for brook trout fishing. This fly is tied on a streamer hook, uh, two or four X long, size four through 12. We're using three aught thread. And the reason for the heavier thread choice will become apparent when we tie in those brass eyes. And I like to use yellow thread on this fly. The tinsel is for the tag. We're using a gold tinsel tag, so we'll use mylar tinsel. There's a yellow tail on this fly. The yellow schloppen feathers are excellent for tails on wet flies and streamers. The body of the fly is peacock hurl. We'll use strung peacock hurl. Then I add a throat on this fly of red hackle or red schloppen. Then the wing of the fly in this version is going to be yellow bucktail. You can also tie it as yellow marabou. Uh, we'll add some red crystal flash for pizzazz. And of course the gold or brass Edson eyes. We're starting out with a yellow thread body on the fly. I'm using a three aught size thread and the heavier weight is to assist in attaching those Edson eyes, which we'll see in a little bit. Stopping just ahead of the hook point to tie in my tinsel for the tip on this fly. I've got the gold side facing me since, whoops, replace that here. Since that's going to be the side that's out. This is that mylar tinsel, which has silver on one side and gold on the other. When I get back to the halfway point between the point and the barb, I invert the fly just to make it a little easier to wrap the tinsel. Gets the point out of the way and the bobbin out of the way. There's four or five wraps with this small mylar tinsel is all you need. It's a double wrapped tag, which covers up any gaps that you might have from the first wrap. So you wrap backward and then forward. Secure it with a couple turns of your thread and snip off the end. You won't be needing it again. This fly does have a tail. And as we said at the beginning, there is quite a bit of variation in this pattern. I'm tying a, a version that I've used very successfully for brook trout fishing. I like a yellow tag on the fly. So I have a yellow schlappen feather here, which is great for wet fly throats and tails. Um, it's very, very soft, webby fibers, very long, um, and just has a really nice look once it's tied in. So I just take a short section from one side of the stem straighten it out from the stem so that my tips are in line and then with one pull I can pull it from the stem roll and I give it a little bit of a roll between my fingertips just to incorporate those fibers the tail is short on this fly so you don't want to it to extend much more than that beyond the curve of the hook and a pinch wrap and two securing wraps is all you need. I'm gonna trim this long so that I leave the butt ends of the materials to be incorporated into the body of the fly. Otherwise, if you cut everything off at the back, you leave a bump at the, your tie-in point that otherwise could be incorporated into your body. We'll do the same thing with the body material that's coming up next, which is peacock hurl. I take it off a clump of strung peacock hurl. Choose some nice long fibers. For a hook this size, you want four to five fibers. And I'm gonna tie that in at the same point I just finished the tail. And again, leaving those tag ends 
and wrapping forward, incorporating those materials into the body. This makes the body a little bit thicker, which is a nice feature on this particular fly. Now when I wrap hurl in a body, I like to twist it so that it twists into a rope of sorts rather than separating the individual fibers. And as a right-handed tire, um, I need to twist clockwise to create that kind of simulation of a single strand. And wrapping forward with the hurl passing from one finger to the next. See, I actually, oh, I got a broken strand is what happened there. So what you can do in that case is just break it off and then wrap back over that tag end. Alternately, you could go back and to the tie-in point for the body and redo it, but we were able to save it just fine. A couple turns to secure and snip off those tag ends. Next, I put a throat on this fly. That's optional, but I think it looks very nice in the finished version. Red is the color of choice. I use a schlappen feather for that, again, same as I did for the tail, with the very long, webby fibers. I'm gonna stick them straight out from the stem and pull, give it a little roll. Size your throat so that it extends just about back to the point of the hook. and check it to make sure the position is right. You can adjust it with your fingers if you need to at this point before snipping. Make sure you get all those little fibers. Okay, now it's time to set the wing. We're going to use bucktail for the wing. So this is considered a bucktail style streamer. It's also really effective tied with a marabou wing, but this will be a, a different technique to illustrate. Um, choose fibers from the center of the bucktail. You want those nice, long, straight fibers. A pretty, you know, a decent sized pinch, but you don't want to overdress this fly um, because the more sparse the bucktail is, the faster the fly is going to sink. And when you're fishing it, especially in moving water, that's a benefit. You want to, that fly, since it is slightly weighted with the eyes, it's going to get down there more quickly into the water column where you want it to be for fishing. And a hair stacker to align your tips, more or less. They don't have to be perfect. I don't need to have a, a you know, exactly equally aligned. It's just a rough, rough stack and any very short tips I pull out, anything that's a little too wild or misaligned. And you can kind of clean it up with your fingers too. If you pinch tightly at the, the um, ends and pull out, you get those short fibers. <clears throat> Sizing the wing, it should extend to the back of the tail. So I'm no need to snip those butt ends until it's tied in. So find my tie-in point, pinch with thumb and middle finger, come up over with a loose collecting wrap, and then put the pressure on as you come down. We're using this heavy thread, 3 aught thread, so you can really put pressure on that bucktail and it's not, not going to break your thread. Check your position of your wing and snip off your butt ends. Make sure they're snipped way back from the eye there. And we can cover up some of those butt ends with the thread wraps. And at this point, I do like to give a small drop of head cement, let it soak down through those wraps to really penetrate the ends of that bucktail, lock it in there. Here's another variation that I like to do. Um, I think it adds a lot to these flies. If you put a, just a little bit of crystal flash in red, is nice for this pattern if you have it. So I'm gonna double the strand over and double over again. 
so that I have a total of at least four strands for this fly. So it's pretty sparse again, which is what you want. You the tips and tie it in on top of that bucktail. We can even that up at the end if we need to. Now another nice accent on this fly is a little hackle um, top of the wing. So this is short, um, about uh, still a bit shorter than the throat. We're going to use the same red schlappen. Alternately, you could use a strung red um, hackle, but the schlappen tends to be a little longer and the fibers are softer. It has a nice, really nice action in the water on these wet fly patterns. Tie that in just a very small pinch as the top of the wing. And snip. All right, now we're up to the point where we add our Edson brass eyes to the fly. These were originally made, we think, um, from Bill's days working in a hardware store. It was a hardware and sporting goods store. He um, was actually a jig and lure specialist for a while. Um, and these, they think, are, are little watch parts, um, gold watch parts that he experimented with on his flies and decided that it was a really nice substitute for jungle cock um, visually, but also provides that extra weight to get the fly down in the water. Now, when you use your scissors, to, we need to trim this. You see it has a handle on the back of the that um, square or squared off side is the side we're going to cut off. And the spoon side is the side we want to show, the eye. Um, so to cut this off, you want to use a nice sharp pair of scissors, but don't use the tips of your scissors. You'll ruin them um, if you do that. That's the part of the scissor you want to save for snipping your, your materials. I like to go way into the butt of my scissors like this, or even use a dedicated pair of scissors that you use for cutting wire and lead and things of that nature. And I'm going to cut this off at a slight angle, angling up. If you can see that. And I tie them in one at a time, starting with the side, well, starting with the side away from me. So I'm just angling the, the fly in the vise so that I can see placement of this eye, and we'll be able to see it better on the second side. The important point is that we're wrapping with very tight tension on the thread over those eyes because this really needs to lock right in. Now I'll show the technique more clearly on this close side. So again, using the deep end of the scissors to cut at an angle to remove that handle component of this. Make sure the um, curved out part of the spoon is facing out on this little eye. You could position it with your right hand and then move in with your left hand if you are a right-handed tire um, so the, to hold the eye in place. So then I'm just exposing that little stem now and it's extending just short of the eye, which means I'll be able to cover it all up with my thread wraps. So again, very taut tension on this thread. Cover those eyes right, that handle right up. And even at this point, you'll see I can position it a little bit if I need to tweak that, but I want it to be in line with the shank of the hook. And now it's just a matter of, and I'm holding this hook with my fingers because I'm putting a lot of torque on this. And that's the, where this three-aught thread comes in really handy. So once I've covered up my handle on the um, on the brass eye, I'm ready for my whip finish. I'll flatten out my thread so it's not twisted when I do the whip finish. It makes for a cleaner head, cleaner head. Just a couple turns for the whip finish and break that right off. Snip any tag ends. Put some drop of head cement on the fly. 
make sure you really penetrate all those wraps. I like to do a couple coats of thread cement, actu head cement actually. So once this dries, I'll go back and add another layer. It's good to use your bobbin to clean out the eye as well so that you don't leave any cement residue that hardens up. So when you get, take it out to fish, you have to clean it. And that's the variation on the Edson Tiger Bucktail Streamer.